Extinction Level Episode 14 Crash Henry's Humphy had slammed with the side against the tree, stopping the car instantly, and the motor turned off. <coughs> Hurt at his side, Tim looked eyes wide at the gun in his hands, squeezed in between him and the door of the car he had slammed against, his eyes close to the end of the barrel. Thankful the gun hadn't gone off, he pushes himself away from the side. Ah. Raymond, sitting in the middle of the front of the car, pressed against Henry, pushed himself away and turns to look at Henry, who was also conscious, shaking his head. Ah, oh, jeez, Henry. What happened? Ugh, Carlos grip. Then Henry will look back at Tim, who's groaning softly. You alright, Tim? Yeah, I think I'm okay. Just hurt my arm a bit when I slammed into the side. Now what are we gonna do? Henry tries to restart the engine. It whirs and sputters, but it does not start. Then Wood tries to open the door, but it's dented inwards and doesn't budge. My door is blocked, broken. Raymond, can you get on your side? Raymond looks outside his window and looks around. He listens for a moment. Come on, Ray. I need you to take a look at the engine. You know engines, right? Uneasy now, Raymond looks at Henry. The response uncertain. Yeah, sure. Raymond gets out, looks back, sees nothing and walks to the front of the car, opening the hood. Smoke billows out and Raymond comes walking back to his door and leans in. Ah, it doesn't look good, Henry. Hopefully it's just loosened some wires, but we'll know soon enough. Tim, can you give me that box underneath my seat? There should be a small toolbox there. Tim reaches underneath the right front seat and takes out a small toolbox, which he hands to Raymond. Thanks. Raymond walks back to the front and disappears behind the hood of the Humvee. You think he can get it fixed? Let's hope so. I wouldn't like to walk the whole way back. You think there are dinosaurs out there? Finding this funny, Henry Wu laughs, looking back at Tim with a smile. (laughs) Tim, I know there are dinosaurs out there. We put them there, remember? Seriously, I mean, you don't think the T-Rex will come after us? Come on, Tim. You still have that gun to shoot it with if you came around the corner, right? At that moment, they hear Raymond. Jeez! Something thuds on the floor, chittering, silence, Raymond muttering. Raymond! You alright? Yeah, I'm fine. A little bugger just scared me is all. (laughs) What do you want? Go! Henry! Give it a go, would you? Okay. You invited your friends, huh? Henry turns the ignition, sputtering the engine comes back to life. Good! Raymond closes the hood and reveals a bunch of consignatics, chittering and jumping around him. Raymond points at them for Henry and Tim. Get a load of these guys, huh? What do you think they want? Go on now, get out the road or we'll run you over. Shoot! Within the car, Henry turns a little nervous. Raymond, get in the car, we should go. They're not dangerous, right? You said compies are scavengers, cleaning up the dino dung? Yes, and no. From the forest to the side, a compi jumped onto the hood of the car, screeching at Raymond and almost immediately jumping onto Raymond's face, biting him on the nose. Raymond throws the animal off and turns to look at it, while it joins its friends surrounding Raymond. He makes a move to the door of the car, and the animals move aside. That wasn't nice! Get out of here! Raymond kicks dirt at the animals, which take a little more distance, but they keep watching him. Confused, Raymond shakes his head, rubbing his lightly bleeding nose, spreading the blood over his face. Come on, Ray! Get in! Dazed, Raymond walks towards the door and gets in. The animals try to make one last move, jumping at the door as Raymond closes it, and they jump up in disappointment. Henry puts the car in gear, and as the car starts to move, the animals scatter away. Henry looks at Raymond, who is wiping the blood off his face with a paper tissue. You okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Just a little lightheaded as well. Why did they do that? They can be aggressive. Come on, let's go back and get you looked at. They drive off, returning to the worker village. The moment they returned to the worker village, Tim and Henry took Raymond to his room and into bed, in the hope he would recover soon from his lightheadedness, which had become worse on their way back. Seeing Raymond now gently sleeping, Tim looks up at Henry. I think I'll take a moment too, in my room. Okay, I'd better let Mr. Mizrani know we've returned. They part their ways, and Henry makes his way to the control room, finding Mizrani inside, looking straight at him with his back to the room. Mr. Mizrani. Henry. Good to have you back. Found what you are looking for. Took you long enough. 
Yeah, I think I have what I need. But I'll have to analyze the data we retrieved, which I'll do immediately after. I just can't tell you that we've returned and found your stray guests. They were at the compound. They were, huh? Vic Hoskins, sitting back, relaxed in the room, to the right of the door, had returned with the search party. Henry Wu had not noticed him sitting there yet, behind him. He turns to look at him, surprised. Hey, you're back. Yeah, of course. Gotta eat, you know. Did you bring my T-Rex sample? Certainly. Hoskins tosses a small vial towards Henry, who snatches it out of the air. Careful! And yeah, I think you should go look quickly. They're being chased by raptors. Raptors, huh? Then they'd be lucky to survive at all. Vic, just get your team and go pick them. The first day tomorrow. Hoskins gets up to leave the room. Tomorrow? Hoskins turns to explain, pointing outside to the jungle, making wild hand gestures. Look, those people out there are responsible for getting lost out here on the island. I'm responsible for my team, and it'll be getting dark real soon. I'm not risking my men out there. Certainly not in the company of engine's most dangerous assets running around. Right now, they're either dead or they found shelter, which will make them harder to find. Trust me, we have a better chance in the morning. Alright, Vic. Daylight tomorrow morning. Sure thing. And take Murphy. The kid? Why? It's what I brought him here for. Say, he represent John Hammond's legacy. I thought that's what those creatures were. Just take him. Muttering Hoskins leaves the room. There's always something. But where's that case of scotch on those good days? Are you sure about Tim? Why do you ask? Never mind. I'll get back to my work. Good. Good. Who turns to leave too? Henry, have you seen Raymond by any chance? Uh, yes. Sorry, I forgot. Uh, that was the other thing. Raymond helped me out. Good. He's back now too. Hoskins can deal with our uninvited guest, I'm sure. I need to get back to the mainland. Yeah, the thing is... I have is... other business to attend to. Thing? We had a little incident. Oh, don't worry. He's okay. He just needs to rest a little. How much rest do you think he needs? Give him the night. I'm hopeful he'll be well tomorrow. I'll keep a close watch on it. You are hopeful? Henry, I need my pilot. This remark is followed by an awkward silence for a few long seconds. Neither man knows what to say. As Ronnie looks outside the control tower, seeing the helicopter standing idle below on the ground, a short distance away. I should have taken flying lessons when I had the chance. Sorry, sir. What if he's not well in the morning? I don't think... I don't know. I can't stay here. A control worker speaks out. <coughs> Sorry, but I overheard. There will be a supply ship early morning. They could take you back to the mainland after unloading. Okay, that will be the backup plan. Let the captain of the supply ship know they may have another passenger. Okay, sir. Henry, check on Raymond early in the morning and let me know. All right, then. Good night, sir. All right, then. And uncomfortable, Henry Wu leaves the control room, closing the door behind him. Back on the beach on Isla Matanceros, Marti Guterres walks along the jungle line, attempting to locate a living specimen of the Comsognathus. The sun is setting and it is getting darker. Waves are softly crashing on the sandy beach into the distance and Guterres is losing hope to find anything today. Then he spots something, a large figure further along the beach, washed up on the shore, waves washing over it. He looks back at Gonzalo who came along. Gonzalo. He signals Gonzalo to follow him and they approach the figure partly buried in the sand. An almost white carcass of a man-high animal, not clearly distinguishable, but with a skin of leathery texture. Then Gonzalo reaches him, spotting the clawed foot of the animal. ¿Es esto lo que yo creo? I'm afraid so. Tenemos que destruirlo tan pronto como sea posible, para prevenir contaminación. Gonzalo turns Wait. and runs back. Ah. With the sun going down, the sky turning a dark blue, Marta Guterres approaches the carcass, staring at it for a moment as the waves keep washing over it. Marty puts on gloves, nearing the carcass carefully, covering his nose against the smell. He pulls the carcass out of the waves, onto the beach. From his jacket, Marty takes a syringe and a test tube with a liquid substance. Then Gonzalo returns, followed by Andrea, who is carrying a flamethrower, shouting. Por favor, no! Espera! Quiero obtener una muestra. Moving quickly now, Marty pushes the syringe inside the carcass to get a tissue sample. As he does so, Andrea pushes past Marty, trying to push Marty away from the carcass, and the needle breaks. Andrea lights the carcass on fire, and quickly Marty backs up a few steps more, moving away from the heat. 
disappointed. What he looks down at his syringe. At only a very small sample. He adds the entire sample to the substance in the test tube, which reacts, turning brown. Marty, feeling terrible of what this discovery means, slowly falls back through his knees onto his butt, sitting on the beach, knees high, staring at the burning carcass. These dead carcasses can wash up anywhere. I'm sorry, John. I just can't keep this quiet any longer. While the carcass burns, its muscles contract, and the hat and tail lift up. Andrea jumps back in fright as this happens. <laughs> to a knowing eye, it would be clearly recognizable as a male velociraptor. Quills on its head, eyes already gone, and sockets flaming. Get him on your sister! The terrorist takes a satellite phone and dials a number. Waiting for the phone call to go through, the terrorist looks at the sharp teeth of the carcass, now clearly visible, standing out against the flames. Jorge? Again, Andrea lights the flame throw, and the terrorist imagines the sound of the flames as though it's instant velociraptor snarling. Alert our contact at the door, and tell them that the quarantine on Isla Sorna is failing. These animals should all be destroyed to stop the spread of a deadly disease. The flames stand out against the darkening sky as the carcass falls back again to the ground, still burning. Guitarist's eyes follow sparks of the flames spiraling up into the darkening sky, where they disappear among appearing stars. <laughs>